namaste in this session we will discuss how to code out the different confusion matrix matrix okay so i have imported all the necessary libraries that i'll be using and i and i'll be using the churn modeling data set which has a set of people and the target variable is whether the customer exited the bank or not okay so the customer has various features like gender geography age tenure balance so based upon these features we have to predict whether the customer will leave the bank or not now i don't think the customer id and surname have much importance when it comes to predictions so i'll just be dropping them and if i check my shape of my data set i have 11 columns and 10000 rows okay now if i check i do not have any missing values in the data and now i'll segregate my data into feature vector x and target variable y now if i check my value counts i have around 8000 negative results that is 8000 people did not leave the bank and 2000 people left the bank so there is a kind of class imbalance so we need to keep this in mind when we are doing the train test split that we need to specify the stratify is equal to y parameter now if i check my data i have two columns here has credit card and is active member so both of these although these are numerical features they are actually categorical features one means the customer has credit card and zero means the customer does not have one and is active member one means yes and zero means no okay so these are categorical features and hence i'll be including them in my cat calls list now i'll simply robust scale my all my numerical columns and one hot encode my categorical columns and now i'll just pass them in my pipeline here this ct object at the end of it and and as my last step of my pipeline i'll be fitting a logistic regression classifier okay so after fitting my classifier it is time to do the predictions and these are my predicted values okay for the first 15 people in the data and if i check my real 15 values of the first 15 people i see that the first person was correctly classified to leave the bank and this person this fifth person who did not who was predicted to not leave the bank but in reality the person did leave the bank so it was a case of false negative and this is what we'll be trying to picture in the confusion matrix that how many true positive true negative false positives and false negatives were there and for that i have imported the confusion matrix function or the class from the sklearn.matrix module okay so first off what i'll do is i'll say confusion matrix and if i check the documentation it is asking me for for y true and y pred so my y true these are my y test values my y pred what are my y preds well these are my preds which are just calculated here okay so now if i press control enter i'll get this kind of a confusion matrix now you must be wondering which one is the actual class which one is the predicted class and which one is the negative and which one is the positive well by default scikit learn uses this kind of implementation where the actual is on the row level and the columns are the predicted level and the negative and positive are assigned in such a way that if i check my p dot classes underscore i'll get 0 and 1 right so 0 is my negative class and 1 is my positive class and hence scikit learn has sorted this classes array and hence i have negative first and positive second so basically this 1530 is my true negatives 63 am a false positives 319 am a false negatives and 88 am a true positives so this is how we decode our confusion matrix so now what if you want the positive to be up and negative to be down something like this okay so it is quite simple to do that so what we'll do is i'll simply say the confusion matrix and again i'll pass in my y test and my preds these two arrays and next i'll also pass in an argument called labels and this will be equal to 1 comma 0 okay so i know that scikit learn has chosen 0 and 1 to be the order but i want the order to be 1 and 0 that is positive and negative class and when i press control enter i get this confusion matrix which is the same as last one if if i check but the only difference is now my positive is up and negative is down so now we need a way to extract information from these four values what i will do is i'll just copy this here and now i'll say dot ravel when i say dot ravel it will simply just put one row beside the other so this 83 and 319 these are this is my first row and 63 and 1530 was my second row so these are just put one beside the other okay so this are just converted it into a 1d array and now i know that 88 is my true positives right so what i'll just simply do here is i'll say true positive is my first one 
Second, I know that 3, 1, 9 are my false negatives. So I'll say false negatives, then my false positives, and then my true negatives. So these are my four values in this order. Now I have successfully extracted information from this confusion matrix. And now I can calculate, for example, my precision. My precision will be equal to true positives upon true positives plus false positives. If I check out my precision value, it is 58.27%. Now there must be an easy way to calculate all of these things, right? So scikit-learn has done that thing for us. It has given us these functions of accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, F beta score, and Matthews correlation coefficient scores, and others as well, which are available in scikit-learn.matrix. And we just need to pass in the Y test and the predicted values, and this will calculate the values for us. Okay. We find that my precision was 0.6. My recall was very low at 0.21 or 21%. F1 score is 31%. Now for my F beta score, I can provide an argument called beta and the choice of beta depends upon a business use case. And next we can also calculate the Matthews correlation coefficient, which is 26% in this case, which is a very ordinary MCC score. So which is signifying that our model is not a very good one. So this was all about the basic confusion matrix metrics. Now, if you want to check out what all other metrics are available, you can simply say from sklearn.metrics import scorers all in caps and i can now say scorers dot if i check what is my scorers i'll get this kind of a dictionary i can if i say dot keys now i get all my different metrics available and if i say it sorted this will sort my list now these are the different metrics available so this would be all for this one so thank you for watching